All right, in this video, I'm going to do a complete partial fractions problem. And what I'm going to integrate is x squared minus x plus 6 over x cubed plus 3x. Um, remember, the first thing you have to ask yourself for these partial fractions problem is, do I have to do long division? But remember, you only do long division if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. So we don't have that problem here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is factor out an x in the denominator so that I'm left with x squared plus 3. And then remember, you should try to factor the denominator as much as possible. x squared plus 3 won't factor any further. So my linear term of x, I put an a over x for that when I do my partial fraction decomposition. My x squared plus 3 term will also get its own little fraction. And again, on top, I'll use a bx plus c term for that. Okay, so if I get rid of the fractions by multiplying both sides by the denominator, I'll be left with x squared minus x plus 6. Then on the right side, I'm going to have a times x squared plus 3. And then I'm going to be left with a bx plus c times just x. At this step, what I would do is I would plug in um, x equals 0. Notice if you plug in x equals 0, on the left-hand side, you'll just be left with 6. On the right-hand side, if I plug 0 in, I'll get a times 3. But then if I plug 0 into the other part, I'll get a 0. So the whole second term will just cancel out, and that will allow me to solve for a, and I'll get 6 divided by 3 or I'll get a equals 2. Um, after that, you're going to have to do your equating of the coefficients because there's nothing you can plug in to um, you know, get rid of this first term. So we'll have to do the equating of the coefficients here. So if we multiply all of this stuff out, let's see, go to another board here. Okay, so we have x squared minus x plus 6. If I multiply out the right-hand side, my ax squared plus 3 plus bx plus c, when I multiply that out, I'm going to get ax squared plus 3a plus bx squared plus cx. And this is where now we have to do our equating of the coefficients. So if I just collect all my like terms on the right-hand side, I'm going to group my x squared terms together. So I'm going to get an ax squared and a bx squared. And I'll factor the x squared out. So I'll be left with a plus b. And then I'm left with, um, it looks like a cx term, and then a 3a term. Okay. So again, if you look at the coefficients, this is where we do the equating of the coefficients. If you, number, if you notice the number in front of the x squared on the left side of the equation is a 1, it says the number that goes with the x squared on the right-hand side is a plus b. Well, from a second ago, we figured out that a was 2. So that will allow us to solve for b, and we'll simply subtract 2 from both sides and get that b equals negative 1. Notice also if we do the equating of the coefficients for the um, x term, notice there's a negative 1 on the left-hand side. Well, the only thing that has an x attached to it on the right-hand side is just c. So we'll also get that c equals negative 1. Okay? So really, it said we had to integrate a over x. Well, we said a was 2. So now we're integrating 2 over x. And then we said b was negative 1, and we said c is also negative 1 over x squared plus 3. So there's our partial fraction decomposition. And again, this is the stuff that we actually want to integrate. And all we do at this point is really just bust up our partial fractions. We'll integrate 2 over x by itself. Um, I'll factor the minus out and have x over x squared plus 3 and then minus the integral 1 over x squared plus 3. 
And now, um, if you integrate each of these individually, the first one you'll simply get two times the natural logarithm of x. The second part, you'll have to do a u substitution on the denominator. You'll let u equal x squared plus 3. And then you'll calculate your du. I believe if you go through all that, you should end up with a 1 half ln of x squared plus 3 term. And then on our last one, we simply have to use our arctangent formula. So it says we take 1 over the square root of the number, and then we take arctangent of our variable over the square root. We'll tag on our plus c, and there's our antiderivative, one complete partial fractions problem. So um, definitely I left a couple steps out. Feel free to take a look at my website. Um, I talk about the partial fraction decompositions and go through some more of the steps in there. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. I'll try to sort them out as quick as I can.